Hello and welcome to volume 16 of the Supreme Commander at Forged Alliance Forever Community Cast Library. I hope everyone's had an excellent week. I've had a pretty cool week, thank you. I would first of all like to thank a few people this week. I've had a few well wishes and congratulations and some people really enjoying the content and that is really, really awesome to hear. That is exactly pretty much the only reason why I'm doing this. So thank you very much. All right, guys, straight into the action. Pretty bit of an average Joe's today, uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Bit different. Take care. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome along to some more mayhem of the mechanical variety. <laughs> this one is a four versus four on the iconic map Gap of Rohan. It's a ten by ten map for those that don't know it. Uh, you either love this map or you think it's complete and utter cancer. We're going to call this team on the left, team one, this team on the right, team two. And uh, coincidentally, we've got a bit of a, an average Joe's today. And also, I should mention before we start, I am in this cast. I will be referring to myself in the third person just because it makes it easier for me uh, to slag myself off. So... Apologies if that's a bit weird. First up for Team 1 going green and super sexy cyber and weighing in at 1500. It is Agent Washington. Second up for Team 1 in red going UEF marching towards the reclaim in the middle weighing in at 1200. It's Scarlet Princess. And thirdly for Team 1 going Old Man Grain gay on. It's Captain Howdy weighing in at 800. And then finally it's the Sloth. Weighing in at 1100, going purple and super sexy Cybran. For Team 2, first up in the top air slot, going blue and UEF. It's QQQ18624, <laughs> weighing in at 1400. That's a bit of a mouthful. And second up for Team 2 in orange, going gay on. It's She's 1985, weighing in at 1100. That's a little bit of a weird thing that uh, She's has got going on here. Um, building those max points as you walk to mid, that's going to cost She's and by extension Team 2 some reclaim in the early stages of the game. But as we continue, third up for Team 2, going pink, suit you sir, and super sexy Cybran, weighing in 1100, it's Darby1985, who's almost at the reclaim, so if we just take a quick comparative look there between uh, She's and Darby, and She's has actually just stopped altogether now, which is really bad. And then lastly for Team 2, going Lilac and UEF, weighing in at 1000, it's Roller. Roller electing to do his first T1 land factory with adjacency to the Hydro, which I don't really like because you can only really get two air factories around this Hydro and you're going to need at least two air factories as an air player. So the comms are making it to mid now and Scarlet Princess is going to have the whole mass field in that half of the map to himself until she's gets there and actually Q is en route to join she's in the middle so maybe the plan is to shoot Scarlet back into his own half of the map and then hopefully there's enough reclaim left to make up for the pit stops that she's has taken on the way it's some shootings going on and it's just basically the ACU's going into there traditional meta dance of reclaim exchange right arm action reclaim there's a scout going out from the sloth now so they should catch a glimpse of the ACU of Q moving to support she's that will be valuable information for Scarlet for sure knows he's not going to be able to hang along too long around that and now Darby moving in T1 artillery which is immediately opening up on the ACU of Captain Howdy Captain Howdy just backing up a little bit but uh, really it's just to get range in range of the reclaim and now the two comms of team 2 of She's and Q uh, meeting in the middle and Scarlet immediately backs up pushes a handful of T1 units in and she's in queue actually not being particularly aggressive right now 
2-on-1 comms situation early on in the game. You can apply a lot of pressure, but uh, Team 2 not electing to do that just yet. Captain Howdy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what I make of that, but Captain Howdy here just strutting back to his own area, minding his own business. Never mind the fact that his mid partner was in a pretty awkward situation there with the 2 on 1 com. What if Darby had decided to move up as well? <laughs> Captain Howdy's just like, I do my thing. That's a really weirdly positioned T1 land factory going down here from Captain Howdy, uh, going for adjacency to a max point. Just seems a bit weird. We've got a T1 bomber here coming in from Roller, and it looks like that Sloth is going to use it. Loses forward radar. Indeed, he does. But uh, the bomber was shot down pretty quickly. It's not too much trouble replacing a bomber. And there's another one en route now from Roller. He doesn't have a move order queued up for it yet, so we'll just ignore that for the time being. And up north, uh, we've got land units coming out from Agent Washington up here. And is Agent intending to stream some T1 units over the mountain? We shall see shortly more T1 bomber action from Roller. This one's moving back into his own base, so catching up in the middle now. And no one's been able to take the four max points available and right in the middle of the map. Um, all the players have moved back. Skull has gone into a T2 upgrade. Captain Howdy is actually really far back here and if that's where he intends to set up his firebase that's gonna cause some issues potentially because the point of a firebase is to defend a forward position and Captain Howdy won't be defending diddly squat if his firebase is around this area uh, so if there's any incursions from Team 2, they can pretty much just go straight down and give the Sloth a few slaps around the face. The Sloth is just over halfway through his T2 Air Factory upgrade. And just another scout being taken out there by Q. And we did just miss a land drop there, so Agent Washington, with a nice idea, doesn't look like the units were got to the floor. No, they didn't. So Agent Washington trying to be aggressive early on here, and that T2 upgrade on Scarlet is complete, and he goes straight into some TMD. A practical decision. We've got T1 artillery moving forward from She's now. Will they continue to push or are they just going to edge back? Well, they're just edging back. We've got some T1 anti-air going up around Derby as he sets up his firebase. See, this is kind of like where you'd like to see a firebase set up. Maybe a little bit more south. But uh, Captain Howdy, well, to be honest, he doesn't have any form of a firebase at all whatsoever at the moment. But... Uh, he is only an 800, this is just a kind of average Joe's match. We've got another transport here from Agent Washington. Wasn't sure for a second there if he was going to pick up engineers. We've got move orders from these T1 units here. They're going to stream over the top of the mountain. A very tight pass at the top there. They will go through single file and we just see the Mantis there making the climb followed by a Medusa and some T1 anti-air um, but Q is gonna see that coming as he's got some T1 interceptors over the top of the mountain to check that out Agent Washington scouting over the top of mid and we see she's on a T2 upgrade now, about 60% done on the upgrade. Darby just completing his T2 upgrade there as we see 
and the notifications. And those units from Agent Washington now making it down and Agent Washington a little unlucky or bad scouting, whichever way you want to look at it, because he's running the units directly into the ACU of Q. If he did just kind of run up over the top here, he could have taken out a couple of engineers, a radar and a T2 max point. And now deciding, having seen the ACU to try and divert what he's got left southward. Not the best decision now from Washington. Going north around that alley there was definitely the way to go in that situation. But it's easy to say when you're watching it. We've got Q now sending out some T1 bombers to try and get rid of these pesky incursion units from Agent Washington. But there's a lot of anti-air in the mix and also Agent bringing in his interceptors. And now there's an air battle ensuing between Q and Agent and Agent is not going to come out very well from this. So a failed Agent's second attempt a failure as well as the first and losing all of his air in the process there and we're just about 10 minutes in oh but we do have a drop coming in from Washington and this one are they <laughs> it took forever for the units to make landfall the transport goes down immediately after dropping and now the units are in that area where we discussed earlier where he should have pushed from once running into the ACU. We've also got a Medusa down there, which Darby has had to re divert for. But some nice work going up on here now. Two engineers down, a T2 Max is going to go down, the radar's gone down. So that drop paying for itself there. And it's all just APM taxing on Q's resources. And Q actually now having to go into T2 gunships deal with the Mantis and I don't think they're going to get any more work done here but uh, they've already done a good good job kind of a mass scouting party going out from Derby pretty questionable grouping them all together like that just checking out Washington let's just jump into Derby so they haven't actually scouted at all yet to uh, Team 2. This is their first scout we are watching now and they just see Scarlet Princess there heading back to his base and the core area of Captain Howdy. Captain Howdy has got all of his T2 Maxes, uh, sorry, Core Maxes up to T2 and now just scouting the weird placement of uh, the weird placement of Captain Howdy's firebase. I pause there just for a second as uh, Team 2 think that that location is a possible nuke crush where in fact it's just where Agent has laid out his power. That's actually something that uh, the Sloth has done as well and the Sloth here just over 12 minutes. He's a little bit slow to T3 air but uh, the Sloth's T3 HQ upgrade 92% and counting Roller is a little bit behind that so Roller's a good 10% behind on his T2 upgrade, uh, sorry T3 HQ upgrade and we do see a few T2 units starting to be hovering around mid now for She's counted really only by Scarlet but Scarlet's still only really at T1 but it doesn't look like that Team 2 plan on pushing, it's just keeping the door shut for now. And actually, Team 2 here, Darby going into a Monkey Lord. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Lots of scouts going out from Q. Intercepted nicely by Agent. And Agent moving his own scout southward and the Sloth is already starting to scout again on the right hand side of the map and he just goes over Roller there and sees the HQ completed for Roller. Oh, that 
that's a pretty <laughs> ugly build there by Captain Howdy. All that T1 power and uh, energy storage placed together. One of them things goes and a whole lot will go. The sloth just building some e-storage, spacing them out a little bit. The Monkey Lord, about a quarter done here for Team 2. It's not being scouted yet by Team 1. We do have ASF rolling off now for, for the Sloth and by extension Team 1. And there's Roller's first ASF off the line for Team 2. Q here is still producing T2 no, correction, T1A, he's using a T2 factory to produce interceptors, is Q, and Agent Washington is at T3, he's not using his factory just yet, he's trying to get this T3 power generator online. How's his power doing? Well, it's not doing too badly, he's not made any e-storage here, Washington, so he's on fine margins getting his T3 power up. And I think now we just saw a ping on the Monkey Lord being speedily put together by Team 2 and it's three quarters done now and if we take a look at what Team 1 have got in the middle, well it's, it's not nearly enough to be honest and Darby just saying in team chat now I'll need air cover when I go in. And the sloth here has got all of his interceptors and he's sending them in for a, a mass scout. Bit of a waste. But when you've got to see something, you've got to see it. And now they see it and the, the interceptors go over the top just as the monkey lord completes. So team one know it's on its way. Darby saying in team chat, going for captain, and there's the attack ping. That is, I think that's a terrible decision for team two. Why go for the lowest ranked player in the match? Surely you'd want to go for Scarlet, or you could even cut down and go for the Sloth. I mean, it's not like it's going to be hard to cut through that. Captain Howdy has left the door wide open, but Darby, Captain Darby, <laughs> Captain Howdy, I can't, I don't know, I don't know what I said, moving on, and let's just take a quick look at the eco while this monkey lord makes its way, and actually, Captain Howdy here is on an upgrade, he's not cancelling and he's not moving, what on earth is he doing? Top of the charts right now for Eco is Q, sorry it's Roller on 167 per tick, second place is Q on 150 and in third is Agent Washington on 135 and Washington now moving in his interceptors, Sloth has got his ASF in the middle to kill all the air supporting this monkey lord, we've got Strats flying over from the sloth we've got t2 oblivion turrets and captain howdy is still sat there with his thumb up his arse and captain howdy deserves to die and does <laughs> and darby will never get an easier kill here and does he go northward does he go south he says he's going down says he's going for the sloth the strat bombers continue to rain down on the monkey lord it's now just under half health but he's turning north with the monkey and this is going to be close scarlet's had some time so he's managed to get some ravages up the strat bombers from the sloth continue to whittle it down and Scarlet's not moving either, but the Monkey Lord is going to go down. And 
that's exactly what I mean that's what I'm talking about because if he'd gone for Scarlet in the first place Scarlet wouldn't have had the time to get these defenses up and then they could have gone for Washington I mean to be honest there wasn't much stopping them going for Washington straight away and Washington is the MVP here and Scarlet is a 1200 the second most highly ranked player on team one so I really find the decision to go for Captain Howdy a very odd one, almost as odd as what the Sloth is doing with two strats right now. He's just sacrificially sending them over. And there goes another one. Well, that one's being pulled back, I think. So Team 1 here, down a man. They need to fill that gap. Team 2, they're going to have to try and capitalize on this and push. They've immediately pushed forward and she's has taken those max points that have been unavailable up to now. And things will just go into a little bit of a lawless. We've got a, uh, a whaler out there from Washington as it, was, as it was trying to take out a T2 max, but the whaler not completing its mission before its life was unduly ended and the sloth continuing to make strats now we got three on the field scarlet just trying to plug the huge gaping hole in team one's mid now with a few percivals and a couple of t2 units the sloth moving up engineers to take some mass points and get some reclaim washing tub with speedy engineering drops to do the same so team one making fast work of plugging this gap and getting things going again we've got two tt tt <laughs> we've got two t3 hq uh, not hqs there's not two hqs there look there's only one <laughs> Uh, so the sloth on double T3 air production uh, roller is on one but he is uh, he does have build power around his one there is build power around the sloths as well actually so the sloth should be out producing um, one of team two's air players for ASF Washington was actually doing pretty well as well and checking back in with the eco after the death of Captain Howdy and topping the charts is Roller way out in front on 275 mass income per tick in second place Roller actually just jumping up to 347 now for a second but in second place is Q on a mass income of 222 in third place is Agent Washington with 217 so it's four versus three here and two of the top ecos belong to the four of team two so team one are well up against it we've got loyalist being stashed in the middle here from Derby and to be honest I'm not sure why Derby isn't just pushing with what he's got if we just jump into Derby for a second I'd be going right now that's enough to get through and cause problems here push south push north well you couldn't push north because of the wall but you can definitely push south and uh, those Percival's aren't going to be able to catch those loyalists if Derby had done that and we've got strats here eight strats coming in from the sloth and taking out that front line it seems a bit of overkill there and lots of T2 anti-air and going for the com of she's I think and they're only going to get one pass Sam's and ASF questionable micro there pretty good job in getting rid of the line of T2 PD that was being thrown up by she's but unsuccessful in getting anything really on a comm 
FC notification now of Scarlett completing a fat boy. Team two are about just over a quarter done on a crab and Scarlett immediately rolling forward with the fat boy. We've got Agent Washington who's also starting to stash a couple of whalers and the sloth is going into laser upgrade as Q completes a shield upgrade on his ACU and the air game is starting to look a, bit, a little bit worrying for team one team two with definitely more ASF combined than what team two have got the sloth not really producing enough and neither is washing tub Washington tub actually producing off uh, four T3 factories here hives going up as well so washing tub looking to scale we've got scouts going out from the sloth over the two ACUs in mid so they would have seen that crab going up from she's and Derby the lasers completed on the sloths ACU and now the sloth going into a tele teleport upgrade and smack is the <laughs> power stall and we just saw there a little spike so the sloth is getting e dumps from his teammates here he'll need that what's the scouting like for team one at the moment do they have any idea where these ACUs are well they obviously know where the two ACUs are at mid not hard to find them but there's no intel on the ACUs of the two air players just yet we do have scouts now going out from Washington. He's run them straight into the ASF of Q though. So they're not going to get too far. But we do see the... There we go. We do see the ACU of Q there. And it's being tagged by Team 1. And counter scouting going out from Roller over the top of agent and we've got strats on the move here from roller probably going for that fat boy of scarlet and the first wave four strats coming in on the fat boy scarlet moving t2 power shields to protect the fat boy immediately <laughs> and uh, the whalers with their piss poor anti-air trying to do something onto the strats Scarlet here protecting the fat boy here with his T2 power shields very well. Team 1 are really struggling in air now. There's a lot of ASF from Roller and Q. And Team 2 just don't have anything in reply for it right now. We do see the sloth anticipating an air problem and spamming sp uh, Sam's up. And the sloths. Did he finish that? I think he's just coming up to the end of that teleport upgrade. We just see the sloth there asking for some E. So we just take a look at Team 2 and Q. Q is definitely a gettable maser target. I don't think the ACUs of she's in derby are particularly well they're not really the loyalists would uh, have something to say about that and roller is also gettable so there's an opening here for t1 and the scouts are going out from the sloth we do have that acu location tagged up here but it's been a little while since that was put down and we got a glimpse there of roller's acu I'm not sure that they've seen that. And the sloth here not doing a very good job with his T3 scouts. He's just queuing them up into the circling ASF of Q and Roller. 
and we've got strats moving down to the bottom now from roller and we just got another glimpse there of rollers acu and the scouts are out over q's base now and there's a teleport command going into the top of q's base q hasn't seen the dome q is gonna about to eat laser <laughs> q here uh oh the shield goes down the acu follows the shortly thereafter and sting is now on the acu of the sloth not too much to worry about there's three levels of veterancy on the sloth's acu already and he's queuing up a teleport here and it's going down south to the base of roller and he's going to come out right next to roller and roller's not built any pd well he has but not enough and roller is going down as well it's two tallies that is one way <laughs> to win air <laughs> and the sloth now job done queuing up his teleport back to safe territory and there's a megalith completed by agent washing tub so team one having been completely out ecoed completely out aired have now started to turn the screw on this match and we got lots of scouts going out from the sloth team one want to see what's going where and perhaps try to counter team one sending all sorts of experimental shenanigans to mid we've got a fat boy there from scarlet there's a megalith en route from washing tub and the sloth here is in the early stages of a monkey lord let's just check back in with the eco and in first place it's agent washing tub with an income of 306 per tick and that is actually way out in front spiking up to 433 there in second place it's she's on 195 per tick Darby is clearly suffering some kind of power issue right now not too sure why that'll be why she's trying to get a T3 quantum reactor online that'll do it and then in third place um Oh, Scarlet's jumped up to second, so she's is now in third place. So, the last time we checked in with Eco, Team 1 were really struggling, and both the top Ecos were on Team 2. It's now completely flipped. Both top Ecos now on Team 1. Washington and Scarlet. Uh, the Sloth is miles behind. Has he even started? It's got one T3 Max and doing a second one. So, the Sloth needs to do some catching up on eco here team two now going about the task of trying to fill out the gaps and air slot and washing tub well he was pushing forward with that mega lift but I'm guessing they've seen the mega lift on the other side waiting for them so washing tub deciding just to recall the mega lift to save territory for defensive purposes and there's now two fat boys in mid from Scarlet which are currently <laughs> having like a fat boy sumo competition <laughs> and the monkey lord for the sloth is about half done there's <laughs> just some uh, exchanges going on in the team chat of team one here as captain howdy is uh, blaming his death on Scarlet or attempting to and I'm not having any of that Agent Washington up here trying to stream T1 units sprinkled with a few loyalists over the top of the mountain but she's already guarding that access point with harbingers nice anticipation from she's and Team 2 look pretty set to fill top air slot. Darby is down there with some T1 and T3 engineers reclaiming and getting maxes up. So 
There's not much defending the mountain pass on the south side though, so the Sloth possibly missing an opportunity here. He does have a T3 land factory actually, so what is the Sloth doing? It's got mass, just slightly stalling on mass. As he uh, finishes up that monkey lord. So both teams here just spamming T4, sending it to mid for defensive purposes. We've got strats being stashed up from Washington. The sloth is. What's the sloth up to? I can't see what he's making. I think he's making ASF in both factories. No. Nope. That looks like strat bombers in both factories. No, I was right the first time. <laughs> it's strat. It's uh, ASF. Apologies. So, Team 1 well in control of air now. And we've got a drop lined up here for Scarlet. Is that drop order at the base of that mountain or at the edge of the base? I'm, I'm not sure. There's a scout going out from Scarlet as he tries to see what's there. And that uh, monkey lord being completed by the sloth. And Scarlet being very... I thought he was going to drop there, but he's, he's not. He needs to get this drop in at the back of Darby's base here. And... Scarlet here just dropping on the edge of the expansion area that Darby's trying to expand into <sighs> could have easily got a drop in on the back here and started wasting T3 and T2 maxes but as it is the Percival's now proceeding at treacle pace towards the core area of Darby and, Dar and Darby and <laughs> Darby is already re-diverting loyalists from mid to rear she's has done the same but with the GC so and that's the difference between dropping down here and dropping at the edge of the base here the Percival's not going to get too much done there's a land factory that goes down but it wasn't a HQ and the GC now will completely annihilate the Percival's I do see a nuke here for Scarlet. The structure is half built and the tube is over half loaded. And if we take a look at Team 2, they do have an anti, but it is not loaded. So. Of Team 1, kept an eye on that anti was built. We've got strats coming in from Washington, who hasn't turned the radar on on his ASF. And the strats going for an ACU, surely. And the shields just holding. That was surprising. That looked like a lot of strats to me. So, Washington there losing all of his strats and a sizable chunk of his ASF. I'm not sure if the... Uh, turning on the stealth turning off the stealth on the ASF was intentional to make sure that all the ASF were targeted and the strats were given a clean pass and there's a, a dropped expansion base trying to go up here from Scarlet but it's being cut out by the loyalists and the GC so team 2 filling out the top and air air slots quite nicely now we've got more strats coming down from Washington just two on their own at the moment the sloth still trying to catch up on eco Washington out in front on an income of 372 mass per tick in second and well pretty much second and third place it's actually team two so obviously with the double eco once they get it going 
will balloon their income and at the moment they're just sitting in kind of a joint second place and then in third it's Scarlet. Scarlet here pushing forward while well, Team 1 pushing forward as a Monkey Lord going forward. The Megalith, two fat boys and a variety of T3 units from Scarlet with T2 shields as T2 artillery reigns in from Shees and that Megalith has actually lost uh, just about kind of 20% of its health to these T2 artillery so washing tub elsewhere right now understandably and his team ping it for him to move it out of the way don't let that die whatever you do and team one continuing to stash some strat bombers we've got three saved up from washing tub and four from the sloth I'm not sure air is the way to go because team two obviously knowing that they've got a disadvantage in air now getting a lot of sams up and the anti is still not loaded for team two and surely by now the nuke is for scarlet the nuke is in the tube for scarlet but it's not being launched so team one think that this is loaded little do they know that it's a bluff <laughs> And we've got loyalists being streamed over the top of the mountain now from Agent Washington. They're just having a little bit of an issue there, fitting down <laughs> this canyon. Even single file is a tight squeeze for the T3 units. And another experimental now being completed by Darby. That one being a monkey lord. Team 1 starting to amass a fair amount of strats now. Fourteen strats. Sixteen with the two up here. That's between Washington and the Sloth. And Washing tub still not turning on the stealth on his ASF. Is that a thing? I mean, should I not have stealth on, on my ASF? I, I, I don't know. Never really noticed that before, actually. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my... Uh, what? Who, who is this? This isn't me. What? No. And another megalith completed by... <laughs> by Agent Washington which, <laughs> Agents uh, renaming the support commanders we've got Big Bird, Ernie and Bert working hard on that maglift there proper working class names they were <laughs> and uh, down in the south Team 2 continuing to get some Sams up And we got the strats moving in from the sloth now. What's the target? The line isn't lining up on the com. They're going for the anti, and there goes the anti. It wasn't loaded anyway, but T1 didn't know, but the anti's gone. The nuke's been launched, and it's aiming right for the middle of the combined fire base of Team 2 and now we see the ACUs flee the area the T4 units are doing the same thing and the nuke comes in and the whole lot goes up in a big pile and we've got a teleport dome coming in here from the sloth and he oh 
cancels cancels that teleport obviously because he was teleporting directly into the path of a GC don't want to do that so team 2 they've made a contest out of this absolutely and they're now actually just starting to push forward a little bit here we've got some sexy micro going on on the megalith of Washington as it's uh, newer brother meets up with it more strats coming in from the sloth and there was only a few in that pile and there's so much Sam in the area still I'm not even sure all of those strats got a bomb off So team two quickly trying to rebuild here. And we've got another teleport dome coming in from the sloth. Has he gone for it? He's gone for it. The sloth's got in. Both the ACUs are there. Where's that GC going? Turn the GC around. Darby goes down. Darby's gone under the shield. Tommy's gone and she's shield evaporates the GC has only just been turned around and that could have gone so very differently but on this day every sloth has his day and now the GC comes in but it's too late now <laughs> it desyncs right at the end but it's all over little bit different there I don't see uh, that kind of action on this map very often so I thought it'd be interesting to share I wasn't particularly comfortable about having to cast myself but uh, hey I think it went okay let's take a look at the stuff so obviously uh, four kills for the sloth and one kill for Darby with the uh, pretty inept decision making of Captain Howdy is only an 800 and it was an average Joe's game so I'm not going to be too critical uh, in terms of the categories Agent Washington uh, almost uh, taking three but just taking two categories here with mass income and power generated he's only a few behind on um, stuff built but stuff built going to she's and then total kills going to scarlet princess in terms of man of the match i know everyone thinks really that the sloth should be man of the match but i can't do it because my eco was absolutely horrific and i really was essentially i did the super sexy things that got the win I guess but Agent Washington gets my vote for man of the match because all of the fruits of our labor which I kind of reaped were done on the back of Washington's eco so Washington gets my man of the match and that's that right guys I hope you enjoyed the content please don't forget to like subscribe leave comments uh, do all the really useful helpful things to help the little channel grow and go forward right guys take care i will catch you in the next one